Hello, I'm Thorstein from Cinema Terror, and today we are going to space. Where no one can hear you scream? No, we're not talking about Alien today, but rather about the Roger Corman produced Galaxy of Terror from 1981. The story is set sometime in the future, where a group of space explorers have been attacked and murdered in the most brutal way possible by an unknown entity while exploring the planet Morgantus. After getting the message, the master, a godlike character of sorts, commands another set of space explorers on a rescue mission to find out what has happened to the lost crew. Yes, master? Put together a class 3 ship with the normal exploratory and defense equipment. You will command the rescue mission. I will personally select the crew. They are not to be informed of this. Yes, master. Now, old woman, leave me. The waiting is over. The new crew arrives and finds no survivors left at Murgantus, and then starts to explore the place to find answers of what happened to the previous crew, all the while putting themselves in danger of falling into the same deadly fate. The plot might sound like your average run-of-the-mill sci-fi horror film, but Galaxy of Terror actually tries to have more to it than just that. I don't want to be too specific, but a team that the movie tries to explore is a team of confronting your own fears. I guess that's the only way I can describe it without spoiling it too much for you. That part surprised me as I was expecting just another silly alien ripoff movie, and honestly I would have much more preferred it if that was all that this ended up being. It's easy to see that there were some interesting ideas to be found in the story, but execution and low budget made the end product just become another cheesy sci-fi film. Some of its restrictions might be a result from it having the low budget of $700,000, but on the other end, much of the set designs, which looked awesome, was probably leftovers from previous Roger Corman produced sci-fi films. The ones directly involved should get some slack as I'm sure that the time frame of creating this film was quite short as that's usually the case with Roger Corman movies. One of the high points of Galaxy of Terror is found in its cast. Nearly all of them have been part of other B-movies, both of the time and in future productions. Seeing people like Robert Englund and Sid Haig together will automatically make this a fun experience, and they, as always, give it a roll and deliver the goods. A problem with having a large cast, regardless of how great they are, and a short running time of only like 80 minutes is that there isn't one or two characters that gets the main focus and the development needed for us as viewers to attach ourselves to them. I would have liked to see some more minutes added to the film to let us get to know them a bit more, especially with scenes of the crew before they arrive at their final destination. I wouldn't be surprised if some of that was filmed, as there is something about the editing here which makes me believe that plenty of stuff might have ended up on the cutting floor. Let's just say that we do get some plot holes along the way. Story inconsistencies and plot holes were not at the top of the priority list to begin with though, as giving the B-movie fans what they wanted was more important for the filmmakers. There are plenty of strange and well-made creatures to be found in this film. It has a fast pacing and a gruesome and gooey alien rape scene to keep you from ever getting close to becoming bored. Anything down there yet? Not yet. A nice little fun fact is that James Cameron worked on this production as a production designer and second unit director. Impressing fellow crew members on this and other low budget movies at the time did help him get noticed in the business and eventually would land him his first feature debut as a director. Galaxy of Terror is a bit of a strange film as the story was ambitious, but the execution was basically just to get all the necessary exploitation elements in order to serve its target audience. The cast, set design and creature makeup will make fans of 80s B-movies happy, while the more mainstream audience will only find pleasure in it if they look for something to make fun of. I am obviously a fan of B-movies such as this, so I had a fun time with Galaxy of Terror, making my final score for the film be a 3. Out of five. So, B movie lovers of YouTube, have you seen Galaxy of Terror and what did you think of it? Was the big alien rape scene a bit too much? 
Which other 80s sci-fi horror films do you enjoy and want to recommend others to check out? Let me know about it in the comment section below, a like is always appreciated, and subscribe if you want to keep yourself updated with my future videos. Thank you.